Hi, I'm Mike, and in this video, I'm on a mission to rebuild our 30-year-old Arrow Tow camping trailer after it nearly broke in half last summer. To learn more about this trailer, you can check out this video that I posted long before I even started its metamorphosis into an off-road trailer. In this video, you can learn how I installed a roof rack. So we've got a trailer this weekend. You can check out how it anchors our camp setup in this video. And then see how I broke it in half in this one. In this video, Brad Davidson and Dave Wiggins, with the help of Poptite and Harry Wagner, build a new custom seal frame at B Rad Customs in Sparks, Nevada. All right, so uh, we are working on the trailer, and B Rad and Dave helped me. Uh, his name is Brad, but his Instagram handle is B dot Rad. So I think I'm going to call him B Rad because that's pretty awesome. Anyway, uh, we're heading over to Summit to get some parts for the trailer, and then we're going to go to the metal place to get metal for the trailer. He thinks it's going to take about two. Sticks, that's what they call it, sticks of um, uh, two by two square tubing, uh, 120 wall, and the sticks are 20 feet. And then uh, we're gonna come back and start working. Um, the trailer, <laughs> we rolled it out of Harry's shop this morning and uh, next door to b -Rad's shop and, and put it up on a lift. <laughs> it's a full troop right now, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Little hydraulic lift, and we jacked it up, and so then we're gonna get to work on it under there and um, cut the spring mounts off and uh, grind out some of the paint, and then we're gonna um, make a nice frame for it out of square tubing, and I'll have a receiver in the back for my bikes. You know, you want to have the the coupler to wheel, um, the coupler to axle be the same as the wheelbase of the tow vehicle. And that hopefully will make it a lot easier to back up. With this short trailer, it was just a pain to back up with this. And then with the Ford, it was just almost impossible to back it up without just going back and forth and back and forth. It was terrible. So now we'll have a much longer um, trailer tongue. So it'll be a lot easier to maneuver. Um, so yeah, that's where we're going now. We're gonna head over to Summit Racing, which if you don't know Summit Racing, then you must live under a rock. But they have a big uh, customer warehouse store just down the street here on Glendale in Sparks, Nevada. And then some uh, metal place where B-Rad likes to get his metal. And then uh, we'll go back and start working and hopefully we'll have some awesome progress made today. I'm so stoked. I can't thank these guys enough for helping with this. Um, Harry is working his day job and then he'll be back at the shop this afternoon. Harry hooked me up with this. I, I sent him a text and I was like, hey man, do you think somebody would be willing to trade video work for welding work? And he's like, yeah. And so here we are. Um, his friend Dave from Elko is helping and B-Rad is super stoked to help on this. It's really awesome to have guys like this who are so knowledgeable and skilled in what they're doing that it's not a big deal for them to do this. I'm very grateful and thankful that uh, they were around. Thanks guys. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. Well, we don't necessarily have to get perfectly flush because remember the bar is gonna go past here. So I think maybe we could just do cut off. You just cut them off because it's, it's yeah, not gonna because, interfere. Yeah, because well, I think the one brace, if we measure it, we could actually, we're probably gonna split the two. Like, we just miss here. it on purpose. Yep. Oh, so we're not building a box. We are building a box, but it's wider. going wider than these. Yeah, a little yep. bit wider. I think it'll work perfect. Cool. All right, plasma is right there by the mop bucket. Do you know how to use that thing? Oh, wait. Oh, Dave. Dave cut off the old spring hardware with the plasma cutter, but we didn't take them all the way down flush with the rail. The new frame is going to be the maximum width of the trailer body and will extend beyond the original frame, so they won't interfere. Yeah. 
Brad, with the help of his trusty shop assistant, Pop Tight, laid out the precise grid for the metal trailer on the floor of the shop. How far do you want to go past? Just a little bit past it. The frame's only going to be four feet, so. Okay. I'm on it. These chalk lines will be the references for taking measurements for the tubing and then laying out the cut tubing for welding. Okay, now the same right there on the end. Geometry there, bud. See that? All right, and we just snap the line yeah. from there to there. So go to your left, right, pull nice and tight. You good? 48 inches, 48 right? wide, yep. Total, right? That's outside of two. Yes, sir. Okay. Outside, outside, yep. All right. So. Where's the furthest square point? So we had six feet for the actual box right now, right? Yes. And then we wanted another foot. Uh, nine feet to the, uh, to the end of the... So nine feet is to the end of it, but didn't we want to taper it, correct? Oh yeah. So we're gonna be seven foot. It doesn't seem that far when you're just laying it out on the ground. Isn't that funny? Here, we're using the tongue box to complete the measurements for the front end of the frame. Brad ended up cutting the tubing to match the angle of the box, so it looked really sharp. So they couldn't get it running, so remember when he was pulling on it, pulling on it, pulling on it? Yeah. Well, they cut to that scene, they ran over to, I think it's Tractor Supply or Harbor Freight. Harry comes over and goes, hey, B-Rad, can you do me a favor? Think you can get this motor running? So I went over there, tweaked it a couple times, and when they came back with the new motor, it was sitting there idling. <laughs> and then he's just like, dude, they, really? They just given up. <laughs> yeah, it was That's awesome. Funny. Yeah, funny stuff. But Harry's like, hey, be rad. Wow, this is a full service shop all the way. Hey, huh? we don't mess around. Like I said, I'm retired, remember me? Retired. What are you retired, retired from, B-Rad? Reno Police Department. I served 10 years to our community, and I got hurt in a training accident. Yeah. So, yeah. So, now so you're... I was like, hey, I got a permanent limp and a little bit of a pension. So I'm like, we got to do something fun, right? Sweet. So building custom cars and uh, having fun, right? Yeah, this looks like a good, good deal. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to show me some of the, your work here. Heck, cool yeah. Again. Oh, I saw that truck on Instagram. After lunch, we spend some more time getting the lines and measurements dialed. Then it was time to head back and cut some sticks. All right, let me get a measurement first. So we're 75 on the long side. Mucho mas. Pretty good. I like it. But the faster you cut them, they're just not as consistent. Right. So it'll actually make the blade bow a little bit, and you'll actually get the blade to walk. So if you cut with these slower, you get a really nice clean edge. You don't have to do much grinding when you're done with this either, probably. No, very little. I'll even just deburrow with like a file is all. Really? And with this, we'll just wipe it off and we'll burn it. We won't even get anything. Nice. Yeah. So you're marking up for the spring perches there? Yep, so marking center point center of the line. axle and then tracing it around. So when we measure off of here, we'll be able to mark the center of these, measure okay. inch and a quarter, mark it. And, and it. you ground down the paint to be able to weld, and then yep. you ground down the paint on these to be able to weld. Yeah, just clean welds. Clean welds are stronger. Yeah. It's not that much fill, so it'll oh, be it'll yeah, be, be plenty. Yeah. How are you getting? One of the things I was concerned when I was going to do this myself is how would I get this matched up so that it's level like how Good question 
Um, I was going to put a level on it. Yep. And then put a level on the top one. And then tack it in place. Yep. That's what I was thinking. Yep. <laughs> What's the word? There we go. Perfect six and seven eight. A little bit longer because that we didn't quite have that shuttled perfect. So it's it's a little bit off. But like I said, the front of this thing when I scribed well, it, it was well, just again, that was just a rough. Well, so again, we got to rely on the, that. Mm -hmm. It's square. Oh, that's good. We'll cut one more and then I'll just build the. Are cabin. you suggesting that my saying? trailer is not square? What? Sorry, so what does the trailer look like to you, Harry? Yeah, it looks like my sarcophagus. <laughs> sarcophagus. So maybe maybe I'll put that in my will. I want to be buried in the trailer. That's it. <laughs> I ain't passing this down to my children. <laughs> they get their what? own trailers. You know? Yeah, I struggle, have struggled to keep enough tongue weight with the hitch, with the, wrist, the bike rack on the back. So that's why extending the front mm -hmm. Putting your tire, Put the tire there and more water, pounds. and then just moving that forward mm -hmm. will give me that tongue weight yep. to be okay. I think so. With that, so so yeah. you're ta we're talking about putting this this draw bar in, butting these frame pieces up to it, to and then it. tying yeah. it into the next yep the next cross member. Yeah, because I think I'm just going to do one right in the middle, so that way we won't run into anything either. And then we can also mount this for shocks. If yeah. I wanted to do a shock, that would actually work just about perfect on the... the oh, tie line. the shock into the, mm -hmm. the cross-member. Oh, the cross-member, right. Yep. yep. If we want to do the old man emus. Which I think would be good. What you guys thinking? A monoleaf is what you're thinking? Or just like two one or two? Two? We're thinking about, yeah, taking this one down to... Just these two? Getting rid of this one, the overload, yep. and the second one. Yeah. And then leaving those two. I think it would be perfect. That would be nice be and soft. Right. And, yeah. And if it's too soft, if it's too soft, I can put the overload back in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Where, where did these springs come from, Harry? Uh, I'm not exactly certain what these springs are from. Were those like right. your single cap Tacoma? They were. These are Tacoma leaf springs. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Sticking with the Toyota theme here. Mm-hmm. See, we pull blind Toyota most of the time. Exactly. But. Apparently, I cut the clamps. That seems. What, what spring rate would you call that? Ooh, how many inches did it go down? Is it your body mass? It's about 200 pounds per inch. Over the. Yeah. And it only went down an inch? <laughs> well, that's what she said. <laughs> Maybe it's. Uh, this is a family show. Yeah. This is a family <laughs> show. That's what I keep hearing. We initially thought the Tacoma springs would be too stiff, so we took out the overload spring. Later, after initial testing, we put them back. Something like that? Or with the axle over? Yeah. We don't need that much. We don't need that much shackle space. Well, we'll have to re-drill some shackles then, because... <laughs> or pierce them through the frame, maybe? Trailer shackles. Let me tell you a story about these shackles here. So, I was on my way back from Mexico. Yes, doubles as a metal fan, too. Thanks. Oh, flushed. <laughs> uh, I was on my way back from the Mexican 1000 a couple years ago, and I towed my truck down to Ensenada. Roads aren't great. So on my way back, and the shackles broke on my trailer outside of Ridgecrest. So, I don't know anybody in Ridgecrest, but my friend Fred set me up with the 10 benders, and a guy named Bender, that some of you might know from Truck Night in America, and flash and Bender actually cut these out for me for my trailer way more than I needed went over to their shop I didn't even unload the truck from the trailer they lifted it with a forklift torched off the old parts <laughs> installed the new parts with f9 hardware because that was all they had for their race cars and uh, sent me on my way very grateful wow these are so a good reminder they're a little, the yeah, giant trail gear one a little smaller little but you know we try and repurpose stuff yeah, um, so we're gonna... upcycling as I like to call right. it right or downcycling in this case. Or downcycling. So right. Dave's truck is called Leftovers. Because it's all leftover parts. Right. A lot of bang for the buck. It's a toy to pick up. Just do yeah. walk around with it. We will. Absolutely. Alright, let me get my welding and tire on. I think we're going to start 
tech, tech, tackaroo. So here's our here's our frame. So I'm trying to think the best way I want to keep everything perfectly square on here. Probably just slowly keep just tacking our way back. Like the center line yeah, isn't that far thing. back. It's more like it's more like there. The rule of thumb that I that I got from a really smart sounding person on Instagram was you take the the box length, right, which is six feet, right here, you go to the middle, and then you go half a foot back. Oh wow. So that's thirty-six to thirty. So you were right. What was that you said? Half a foot back <laughs> from center. No, the part about Brad was right. <laughs> Brad, no, I didn't, I didn't say that. I no, said no. you were right. Nah. I could have been talking about anybody. That's right. I'm a smart person on Instagram first. Yeah. People on Instagram just sound like they know what they're talking about. And it's yeah. really... Hashtag trailer line. Hashtag. But you got to think, Mike, when you put like your bikes on the back, that, that takes that super cool equation and goes... Woo! Yeah, that puts it farther back. But yeah. I also have more weight here, which is than the normal box. So that whole thing, you just kind of like, we just kind of look at it and go, maybe we'll make the tongue a tiny bit longer, or we can, you know, put a little weight up, weight up front. I think that what we're doing Are you now. Moving the fenders? No, no I, I can't. That dictate where the I are? can. I can. They're not welded. I mean, we need stand. to have we need to have some articulation. So we're not. Th this isn't going to work, so we're going to need to at least get this up to at least here. Yeah. Because we have a, what, a two and a half inch tube here. So we need at least, I would say, at least four inches. Right. Because that's when we stood on it. When Dave stood on it, we're getting, you know, at least three, I would say probably anywhere from three to five inches of flexion. Right. When he was standing on it. So we need to have that distance at least away from it. So... I don't think we need to worry about punching a hole and putting a tube here. We actually need to gain some some height on it if we're going to do spring under. Oh yeah. Hey, At this point, Dylan McFarlane, who you saw in the Roxor Supercrawl videos, showed up with some spare 250 wall tubing and generously offered it up for the project. This material became the tongue bar for the trailer. I initially wanted to make this extendable, but Brad talked me out of that idea. And along with everything else, it got welded on.